We'll begin with member statements. I recognize the member for Barrie Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. I want to take the time to congratulate the Barrie Minor Hockey Association and the Barrie Colts for winning the under 12 BBO and HA Provincial Championships. 17 determined 11 year old boys worked incredibly hard representing the city of Barrie and the Barrie Minor Hockey Association with class and sportsmanship at the provincial level. The team finished 22-1-1 record in the 2022-23 regular season and went 5-0 in the playoffs. They won the Bardon Oakville Winter Classic, the 2020-23 York Simcoe Championship, and capped it off with an Ontario Minor Hockey Association title. The team staff includes coaches Wes Sudsbury, Mark Gurgis, Lee Archer, Chris uh, Mezenuv, Lindsay Neal, Marcelo Seminera, and James Bones, with Christine McColl as manager. Congratulations, team, and congratulations to the roster of teammates, which has Landon Mezenuv, Will Motri, Owen Falzoni, Colton Archer, Tegan Tiffin Samira, AJ Lusk, uh, Jack Hussey, Nolan McColl, Ben Sudsbury, Colin Rush, Jonathan Tagario, jo uh, Logan Monsha, Colton Prock, Ellie Hardy Plummer, Cooper Sugut, Blake Barter, and Jack Whip, who delivered the golden gold. Congratulations. Way to go, team. Thank you. Member statements? The member for London Fanshawe. Today, I rise on behalf of the tenants on Webster Street in my riding of London Fanshawe. This issue has already been brought to the attention of the government countless times with little action on renovations. The residents on Webster Street are, have been served N13 notices en masse after a change in ownership at their buildings. I have received many gut-wrenching stories from constituents fearful of what this will mean for them. Knowing access to justice at the Landlord-Tenant Board is limited. Many do not want to use their names because they fear retribution from the owners, which speaks to the power discrepancy here. One person emphasized the insidiousness of renovations, and I'd like to share. She said, quote, my unit is a two-bedroom apartment that is in excellent condition and has never had any rent or maintenance issues in five years plus I have lived here. My home was affordable, safe, friendly. This community and my neighbours have offered a decent quality of life, and I had hoped to live out my pending senior years in comfort, end quote. She mentioned that the renov renov res excuse me, renovations are not necessary. How can the government allow the landlord to justify evictions based on necessary renovations? She also highlighted this is another way affordable housing is disappearing in our community. This government has made a commitment to creating affordable housing. They need to enact measures to ensure existing ho housing stays affordable. I call on this government to pass Bill 58, protecting tenants from rent evictions and imposing rental controls so vulnerable citizens are not left begging for action to save their homes. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last Thursday evening I attended the Attorney General's Victim Services Awards of Distinction, where I had the privilege of acknowledging the exceptional work of Smith Falls resident and award recipient Amber McDonald. Amber has been the Executive Director of Victim Services Lanark County since 2015. Over the past eight years, she has worked tirelessly to establish the foundations for meaningful support in a well-respected, collaborative environment. A strong and reliable advocate for the victims of crime and their families, Amber MacDonald works around the clock facilitating anti-human trafficking workshops and providing free, relevant training to hotel and motel staff. She helped establish the Lanark County Child and Youth Advocacy Centre in Carlton Place and, has, and was instrumental in implementing a forensic interview room to better serve victims of crime in a large service area. When asked about her motivation to continue raising the bar in victim services, Amber replied, The strength of our network is what allows us to give people back their voice, to move someone from the worst day of their life to a place of empowerment and possibility. Mr. Speaker, today I stand before the House and echo the voices of all who have been impacted by the dedication shown by Amber McDonald and victim services professionals across all our ridings. They deserve our utmost respect and our deepest gratitude for making a difference in the lives of those who need it most. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I'm rising this morning to talk about a subject that's on our minds a lot in this House, and that is mental health, particularly youth mental health. Speaker, I had occasion recently to meet with a bunch of parents who are very concerned with the mental health of their children 
in high school. We've just lived through a difficult two years, two and a half years of folks having to learn on their own. What I'm hearing from parents, what I'm hearing from high school students is many don't feel a sense of belonging. Many are feeling in their, they're in a difficult place. And I don't want to trivialize that. I don't want to tell people that things are going to be better overnight. But what I do want to tell people is that in Ottawa, we have community services to help people with their mental health. And next Friday, on May 26 at 4 p.m. at 464 Metcalf Street, we're going to be bringing together community providers who will give youth opportunities to volunteer, opportunities to plug into services, to feel like they belong. So I invite you, if you want to plug into your community more, if you want to make your community a better place, or if you already are, join me and other community mental health advocates to find out about who you can meet, who you can belong, because you are loved. You are loved for who you are. And we need to make our province a better place, and we're having an argument about that in this building. But on the way there, the services that our grandparents fought for, you deserve a right to access them to make our festivals great, to make our athletics great, to make our arts community great. Youth, we need your help. So join me on May 26th. I can't wait to see you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today with a heavy heart and heart-wrenching memories of innocent Tamils who perished during the last stage of the war, brutal war in Mullivaikal in Vani region in May 2009. This is an emotional moment for me and over 350,000 Tamil Ontarians. Today marks the 14th year of Tamil genocide Remembrance Day. Heinous crime committed by Chauvinist regime against the Tamil nation and hundreds of thousands of innocent lives taken away, including children, women, remain unpunished today. There is no truth, there is no reconciliation. I am proud of our Premier and our government passing the Bill 104, Tamil can begin healing and encourage Ontarians to learn about Tamil genocide. We acknowledge the gravity of this crime against humanity, honour the life lost and commit ourselves to raising awareness and passing the history to the next generation, Mr. Speaker. Today, I am paying deepest respect to those who have lost their lives. We understand the trauma and the share the pain and suffering of those who have lost their loved ones. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Next, we have the member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, my constituents, Dio Marshall and Adri Adriana, reached out to my office to share the financial struggles that they are facing due to decisions made by their building's condo board. Recently, they discovered that their condo board has accumulated $100,000 in fees, primarily due to an eviction, $70,000 in underpaid gas bills. The management of the condo board has requested all residents to pay approximately $700 by June 15th to cover these costs. Speaker Dio and Adriana have been informed that their failure to meet this deadline could result in collections which would have a detrimental impact on their credit scores. They are being penalized for the, for the condo board's incompetence and wrongdoing. These are senior speakers on fixed incomes and are now burdened with an unexpected financial obligation with no offer of an alternative pl payment plan. Speaker, this is not the first time we're hearing such a story where condo residents are suffering due to the lack of legal protection and support for them. We have heard stories uh, where condo residents have been forced to pay over $30,000 in, in mere days or face lien on their property. Condo residents in Ontario are frustrated, Speaker, as there is no effective regulator, no government agency, and no tribunal that they can turn to that can hear disputes such as this and resolve them in a quick and affordable manner. So I ask this government, this government must, take, must regulate and strengthen the condominium authority tribunal's jurisdiction to protect the rights of all residents, especially residents like Dio Marshall and Adriana. Thank you, Speaker. The next member statement, the member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize May as Asthma Awareness Month and celebrate the anniversary of Ryan's Law. Speaker, eight years ago, my predecessor for Elgin, Middlesex, London, Jeff Yurick, introduced Ryan's Law as a private member's bill in this legislature. 
This legislation was introduced because of a horrific incident that occurred in my riding on October 9, 2012. Ryan Gibbons passed away while at school after suffering a severe asthma attack. Ryan was unable to access his inhaler due to school policies and procedures which kept his inhaler locked in the principal's office. Ryan's law mandated that students were allowed to access their inhalers and that schools were required to develop and maintain asthma policies and procedures to better protect asthma students. Approximately one in five children are living with asthma in Canada. Asthma is a chronic lung disease that can make breathing difficult. That means that approximately 400,000 students with asthma in Ontario schools are now protected by Ryan's law. I want to thank patient advocates such as Sandra Gibbons, Ryan's mother, who played an instrumental role in advocating for Ryan's law, as well as the Lung, um, Lung Health Foundation for their advocacy programming and services. We had an excellent meeting earlier this week, and I appreciate their strong advocacy. Thank you, Speaker. As long as they yeah. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Orléans. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Orleans lost an important community leader earlier this month. On May 1st, after a long battle with cancer and surrounded by family, local legend Al Tweddle passed away. Al was a chemist, an engineer, a sportsman, a musician, a conservationist, and above all, a loving husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Al was a community leader and a trailblazer uh, in Orleans for decades. Since the 1960s, Al and his previously deceased wife, Helen, were pillars in the Queenswood Heights neighbourhood of Orleans. This is the neighbourhood I grew up in, Mr. Speaker. And while I didn't know Al back then, I knew who he was. He was the man who maintained the outdoor rinks, who helped run the community centre. He was the man who took care of the tennis courts and so much more. In fact, Al took care of outdoor rinks in Orleans for over 50 years. I got to know Al when I joined the community association and later served as president. He was a constant fixture and an important sounding board for new ideas. Al had a great passion for nature and the outdoors. He was instrumental in developing the Petrie Island into the beautiful park and ecological reserve as the founder of, Presidents of Petri, uh, the Friends of Petrie Island. At Friends, he spent countless hours maintaining the trails, planting trees, cleaning the beach, and educating visitors about the wildlife and history of the island. He touched the lives of many people with his generosity, kindness, and dedication. While he is gone, his legacy will not be forgotten. Rest in peace, Al. You'll be missed by everyone in Queenswood Heights and right across Orleans. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Flamborough, Glenbrook. Thank you and good morning, Mr. Speaker. Ontario is home to over half a million people of Dutch heritage, and I'm proud to represent a large Dutch community in Flamborough Glanbrook. As we honour Dutch heritage throughout the month of May, I would like to celebrate one of the many businesses in my riding that was started by Dutch Canadian entrepreneurs. William Dam Seeds, located in West Flamborough, was started by William and Maria Dam, who immigrated to Canada in 1947. The couple met while working at a seed company in Holland, and they married in 1938. During World War II, William was involved in the resistance, helping to hide fugitives and transport weapons to push back against the occupation. When William and Maria arrived in Canada, many immigrants were unable to find the vegetable seeds that they had grown back home in Europe. To fill this need, the couple started their own seed business at their kitchen table in Sarnia and eventually settled in Flamborough in 1959. For over 70 years now, this family business has provided Canadian farmers and gardeners with high-quality seeds for vegetables, herbs and flowers. Throughout this Dutch Heritage Month, I encourage all Ontarians to visit a local Dutch-Canadian business and to learn about the long history and values of liberty and democracy that our two nations share. Thank you. Statements. The member for Scarborough Centre. Recognizing Ms. Melania Smith, a commercial landowner and a resident of Scarborough Centre, who is sitting in the gallery with her husband, Steve Smith. Melania has been nominated for RBC Canadian Woman Entrepreneur Award in the category of social change and national impact. In addition, Ms. Smith covers her unused parcel of land 
in a thriving community garden after observing signs of local food insecurity. This pesticide-free product grow to the Scarborough Center Healthy uh, Community Food Bank. In addition, she worked with an international organization serving remote and rural parts of India, where she served up a midday uh, nutritional meal program that feed thousands of students and their family, donate school supplies, and mentor women to become more confident, self-sufficient, and supportive of their family and neighbors. Congratulations, Melania, for the work you have been doing at home and abroad. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.